At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the, bo and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Whom do you serve? How do we know who we serve? If I have to ask the question, whom do you serve? Do you serve God or do you serve money? I'm sure all of us would visually say, I serve God, not money. But how do we know that? Well, one simple way to test who we serve is by the yardstick of sacrifice. What are we willing to give up? For example, if you're working in an office and your boss comes up and says, I do know that your weekends are meant for your family and for worship. You go to church on Sundays and you don't want to miss that. But coming weekend, there is an assignment and it pays you really well. What would you do? Would you accept that assignment because you're going to earn some extra buck? Or would you say, no, I have my time for the Lord, for my worship, for my church, for my community. My God comes first. But that's a very simple example. But it, it would help us to find out, like sometimes we may tell ourselves, yes, God comes first, but without our knowledge, we might have enthroned something else there. And worse, when we have enthroned money or mammon, which includes everything material. Today, the passage from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, we've been listening to it for a couple of days, a few more, a few days which helps us to understand life and our relationship to the various aspects of life and ultimately how to put God at the center of our lives. Jesus today advises us saying, to not be worried about things of this world, what you should eat or what should you wear or about your shelter. And he gives us an example of the birds of the air. Now, there is a point that we need to note. While Jesus does say that the birds don't worry, but the birds do work. When Jesus says, don't worry, your father will provide, doesn't mean that you have to stop working for our daily responsibilities. The birds just don't sit on the tree and open their mouth and ask God to feed them. No, they go and work, but they don't worry. It's taken care. And that's what Jesus is 
telling us as well. Do what you're supposed to be doing. Use all the talents that God has given you. Use all the time that has been given to you. But in doing all that, make sure that God is still at the heart of your life. That nothing else takes away the throne of your heart. St. Augustine would beautifully put it this way. He would say, love God and do whatever you want. Love God and do whatever you want. In other words, as long as God is at the heart of our lives, life is meant to be enjoyed. God has created us and he has put us in this world to experience his love in and through what he has gifted us. People, relationships, happy moments, all that the world had to offer. But yet, only through the love of God. And therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, today as we come to the altar and thank God for all the wonderful ways that God takes care of us. He does take care of us because he's concerned about us. There's no father who can love us than our heavenly father. But we need to understand that we also have to surrender ourselves to our heavenly father. For him to work in our lives, we need to give him a chance. Let ourselves into his loving care. To allow his providence to work. Let's pray for that gift of faith. That we may allow God to work in our lives. And that we may have the grace to enjoy his providence in our daily lives. Amen.